Hey, this is Stu Mashwitz, and I'm here to tell you about Optical Glow, an awesome new plugin from the Red Giant VFX Suite. So I've got just a simple kind of Tron motion graphics setup here. Got some text in front of a little 3D grid, and of course, I gotta make this thing glow. So let's uh, create a new adjustment layer, throw it on top, and just for fun, let's start off with the good old After Effects Glow. You know, this effect has been around forever, but uh, you know what? It's it's got some issues. And particularly for me, the issues have to do with kind of the realism of how the glow core looks. And the reason for that is that, you know, this effect is is pretty simple. It's, it's just basically a blur that is then screened or added back on top of the original. And the way this really kind of falls apart is when you try to increase the radius and you really just wind up with something that looks like a soft blob kind of composited on top of your text. Like no one would really ever say that this orange line here is glowing at this point. It's It would take a lot more work and maybe multiple layers of this effect to get it to, to look glowy. So let's take a look at optical glow. Right off the bat, this is looking much better. I've got my typical controls that you might expect here for a mount to control the brightness of the glow and size to control the radius. And you can see here, as I start to increase the, the size, the magic is really becoming apparent. As I increase the size, the centers of the glow stay glowy, and I get this nice, beautiful fall off. And because we're doing all this compositing in the correct linear color space, the blending of the blue glow where it intersects with the orange is really beautiful too. And all the light blends together in a super realistic way. So this is the basics of optical glow. Now, why does it look so good? Well, let's talk a little bit about what light is doing here. So I'm gonna turn off optical glow again and I don't mean to pick on it, but I'm just gonna apply the old After Effects Glow because you know it's something we're all familiar with. And then I'm gonna create a nice skinny white solid. So uh, 10 pixels across, but the full height of the comp. And we'll stick that under our adjustment layer. And let's take a look at the scopes. Now this isn't really about color correction, but the scopes are super handy here. In fact, what I'll do is turn the rest of the layers off, just the solid and a black background. And I'm gonna increase the radius of this blur. And you can see what's happening here is that it's a Gaussian blur. And so it's soft at the top and a soft fall off here. It's a perfect kind of blur for all kinds of purposes, but what it doesn't do is make this line look like it's glowing. The center of the line is way up here and it's long been forgotten by this glow effect. Uh, I could try to increase the intensity to match it up and it's now it looks like a soft line, but it doesn't look like a tight, bright, white, glowing thing. So let's turn that off. Let's turn on optical glow and let's see the magic working here. This is what we call the inverse square fall off. And this mimics the actual behavior of light. Light falls off rapidly from its source. So you can see that even as we adjust the settings here, even as we have less and less glow, we still have a sense of brighter pixels right around the core. And as we increase it or increase the size, decrease the the size, we always have that sense of a hot core and then a nice gradual fall off that kind of asymptotically drops off to black. Now, of course, you still want all the artistic control over this. So in addition to amount and size, we also have a fall off control. So you get to design this fall off curve yourself. Increase this control and the curve gets even steeper. Decrease it and the glow gets even softer and broader. And you can see that at zero, we're almost starting to get back to that Gaussian profile. So, you know, do that if you want, but you're probably going to want to keep this at higher values. The default value of 100 is, you know, quote unquote realistic, but of course what matters most is what looks good to you. All right, so let's turn off that white solid and get back to the business of Tron here. Another control that's very important for the glow is some kind of a threshold control. And of course we've got that. In the After Effects glow, you've got a threshold slider. We've got this slider here called highlights only. And you'll notice that if I turn off the effect, the inside of my letters here are this darker blue color. And that's fine, but I would like just just the outer edge to glow. So I'm going to start to increase highlights only. And what that's doing is just increasing a threshold below which things won't glow. So at a certain value, I can get just the outer edges of the letters glowing there. This is just a skinny solid with a linear ramp on it. And you can see again how organically the glow gradually increases 
over the course of the ramp. Now let's take a look at how that relates to highlights only here. So at zero, everything glows. And as I gradually increase it, only the brighter stuff glows. And because this works with 32 bit, you can actually increase it past 100 and start glowing only things that are truly brighter than the brightest pixel you can see. Um, but what I like about this is that no matter what setting you have here, you have this organic kind of fall off between the stuff that is glowing and not glowing. There's a couple other controls I want to show you here. We've got a vibrance control because, you know, realism is great, but sometimes you want something a little more. So vibrance is just going to increase the color saturation of the glow. We have an overall colorized control. So I can tint all of the glow red or blue or whatever. I'll show you that more in a bit. And this is really great. We've got these inner tint and outer tint controls here. So again, let's maybe uh, get back something white that will show off these color effects a little bit more. So inner tint, let's just say we wanted to put that at a cool color and then we could put outer tint maybe at a warmer color. And now we can get kind of a nice organic chromatic glow effect. It's subtle, but you can see that the glow out here is warmer and the glow inside is cooler. I might want to reverse that, maybe have it warm in the center, cool in the outer bit. Ooh, I like that a lot better. Okay, that's pretty neat. So that's inner tint and outer tint. The other thing I wanna show you is highlight roll off. So if I crank up this glow a lot, you can see that what begins to happen is that we're pushing the cores of these glows into the very, very bright stratosphere of colors. Now again, this is a 32-bit project. It's a 32-bit effect. So this is creating genuine overbright values. If I start decreasing the viewing exposure, you can see all the detail is still there. It's just getting blown out by the brightness. You may want this aesthetic, but you may not enjoy the kind of banding that happens as in this case, the red channel clips out first before the green channel does, or here where the blue channel clips out before the green channel does. So we have this awesome control called highlight roll off. And as you increase this, what happens is we just soften off the core of the glow. And if you crank it up all the way, it can make the whole thing look a little flat. But if you find just the right value here, you can achieve this beautiful glow that has almost like a film-like kind of a shoulder to it. Just a nice soft roll off into the highlights. So that gives you a lot of artistic control over the glow. And of course you can glow horizontal only or vertical only. And then we have this quality control down here. We're currently at production, draft is a little bit faster. And if you find yourself needing the extreme quality, well, we've got that too. But for the most part, you're probably not gonna see much difference and production is a good in between. Now, before we get rid of this crazy scene here, I just wanna talk about like, what have we always wanted from glows? And to me, the answer is this sense of this hot core you know, I've always wanted a glow where something small and bright could glow big while something small and dim could glow small. And, you know, if we've finally gotten it here with optical glow and I'm, I'm really excited about it. To show you what I mean, I'm going to create a tiny little 10 pixel by 10 pixel solid here. And right away it looks, of course, pretty wonderful. That's pretty great. But this isn't a particularly bright little solid. The red channel is one. Nothing else is brighter than one. And it looks nice and realistic, like it's got a little bit of a glow to it. Great. But let's see what happens when we brighten it up. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to duplicate this little red solid, put it right next to itself. And on this one, I'm going to apply the exposure effect. And I'm just going to gradually increase the exposure. What you can see here is that as I increase exposure, I'm increasing the apparent size of the glow. And to me, well, the, I, this is just magic. I mean, I just can't get enough of this. I've got realistic dim thing glowing, realistic bright thing glowing. I've got artistic control over that fall off in the middle if I don't like that banding that I'm seeing there. And I can just adjust, I can just basically design my scene and everything will happen organically. And this, by the way, is the kind of glow where you have a, a super bright highlight where you might see a tiny improvement by switching over to the extreme quality mode. You can see maybe the glow, I don't know, got a little bit rounder there. Now, while we're on the subject of Tron, here's another setup. We've got this cool guy in this little light suit here. And what we've done in advance is we've done some roto here to isolate the parts of his suit. And we have these two roto layers for the bright areas on his suit and the two swords he's holding. And I've got both of these layers set to add mode and then he's positioned over this background. 
So let's throw optical glow on the suit and let's of course start right away with colorize in this case. So now I can pick whatever color I want for his suit and it's just gonna look beautiful and realistic. And I can still use this vibrance control to increase the color saturation of that. But whatever color I pick for his suit, it's gonna have that beautiful realistic fall off. So you don't always have to plan ahead with what color you're gonna make something glow. You can get a realistic glow and tint it whatever color you want. Let's do the same for his swords and maybe set them to be a different color and maybe give them a bigger, brighter glow. So think about using colorize anytime you have an isolated element, white on black, and you wanna tint it whatever color you like. So yeah, you're gonna use this on lightsabers, lasers, energy beams, all kind of magical wonderfulness, but of course you're also gonna use it on just realistic scenes. Here's an example from a short film that I'm working on. This was shot with a camera with a rolling shutter, and we actually did, as you can kind of see here, we really did have the police lights going on this cruiser. You can see one brief moment there <laughs> where it goes, but it doesn't look very dramatic, and the rest of them all kind of slipped underneath the rolling shutter. So my VFX task on this shot is to just increase Increase the drama. What I wound up doing is just finding this little piece of artwork. This is a really low res kind of terrible JPEG, but it had a lot of interesting little detail in the police lights here. And I created this little animation of these blinking lights in sequence. And then I actually put those into a 3D scene inside of After Effects. So you can see my little light bar in 3D here. Here it is uh, animating. And I just kind of match, matched this by eye. So let's go to a nice frame. That's a grid one. And what you can see here that I love is you can see this nice realistic motion blur. And part of the reason that that's happening is that I made sure that those blue values in this light bar source here are truly uh, overbright. So they streak in this nice realistic way. Now let's go into the comp where we put that all together and you can see the final result here. And this is a pretty simple composite. I've got a couple little uh, layers of interactive light here. So here's my blue interactive light. It's just a little mask exposure adjustment just to light up the, the woods <laughs> with some blue there. But other than that, what I've got is um, just my light bar in add mode over the background. Uh, and then I've got a LUT and a letterbox layer on top of all this. Here's my optical glow effect. If I turn this off, you can see that's just that streaky 3D layer on its own added over the plate. You can see how I tried to kind of line it up with the footage that's there. And then here's optical glow on top. And if I go back to this other marked frame I've got, you can see what it looks like on a red light. Again, optical glow off, optical glow on. And this is a great example of why I love an effect like this that does the right thing with light is that it actually makes my job as a visual effects artist simpler. If I just set up this light to have realistic light values and then apply optical glow to it, I get this incredibly realistic glow with very, very little effort and I have so much control over how it looks. Now there's one last thing I want to show you about optical glow. We're going to go back to our text for this. So I'm going to isolate just the text. Now when I apply optical glow, because optical glow wants to create this beautiful fall off and because it's working in a color managed way, as you can see, I've identified my footage as video here and you can also let optical glow know that your footage is log or that it's linear. And by the way, in those cases, the output will also be in that same color space. But in this case, my footage is video. So optical glow wants to kind of take ownership of the compositing process and that means it needs a background. By default, when you apply optical glow, your alpha channel goes away. That's usually the best thing for quality, but of course it's not always the best thing for flexibility. So we have a few different alpha channel modes here. By default, none. We ignore it, we replace the background with black. We can also preserve original. Now, on the surface, maybe that makes sense, but as you can see, the result is that, yeah, we did the glow, but then we just cut the image back out by its original alpha channel. What you probably are thinking you want is more like this, extend the alpha channel. In this case, we preserve the original alpha channel, but where we need to, we add additional opacity so that you can place this back in front of a background like this black solid. This works way better on a dark background than it does on a bright background. And the last mode is pure unmult. This is where we are ignoring your alpha channel and generating our own. And you can see that the difference here is that the solid core of the letters is ignored and the only place where there's alpha channel is where we've generated glow brightness. 
So that's Optical Glow. Beautiful results, easy to use, super realistic light-based glows, but also a ton of artistic control.